Bikini podcast. So what, where are you now then? In I'm in Pittard, Netherlands. So at the very bottom of the Netherlands, right next to Germany and Belgium. Oh, flip. Okay, okay. Training camp or? Oh, so, uh, you know. So I'm, I'm right next to Valkenburg. I oh, ride through Valkenburg okay. like every day. And I look up that hill and I'm like, fuck. Ah, memories. <laughs> What are we again? I suppose we're, yeah, no, it was a good time, eh? I suppose we'll just start off back there. That's when, when I sort of first got uh, introduced to yourself was uh, back in Valkenburg. What was that? 18? Yeah, it was 18 January. The Cyclocross Worlds. So we were on the Irish team back then. But there was a good setup then. There was me, yourself, Adam McGar, who has now retired. <laughs> um, he's, still in the, he's still in the chat. And mechanic rest uh, in peace and who was the other David of course all in one yeah, room so, some guy called Thomas I think what? yeah Thomas yeah some fella yeah so that's how I first was introduced to yourself and uh, can, can we not forget uh, Lara and uh, well they no, they were in a different room now don't forget about that now <laughs> we were all in the bunk bed all in one room it was tight nice so it was yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we went there for Second Cross Worlds. Um, it was cold. It was wet the whole weekend. And the rooms weren't, weren't much better, were they? Nah, but uh, we, were, we were nice and cozy. Yeah. Um, wasn't sure how comfortable I was with an old man in my room sleeping with me. But, uh, yeah. you know, I got through it. Yeah. And uh, I was in with a lot of youngsters. The sink, remember the sink got blocked? The, the shower got blocked? Yeah, that's right. And then and then you put my shoe on the fridge and well, I never got it. My we'll shoe is still there. Yeah, so I, we were leaving and the place was a, was a tip and I there were shoes everywhere. There was clothes <laughs> everywhere. It was just piles of clothes. And just as we were leaving, I, I left a, a shoe, not knowing whose it was, and put it up thinking, Thomas will go, where's my shoes? And we left and I sort of forgot all about it. And then we were like just getting on the plane and I was like, whose shoe was it? And it because you'd stayed on because you were heading on somewhere else. And I was like, Yeah, no, I was on going to bus down to Spain. We were all like WhatsApp and we were trying to get the, the message back to you. And then I actually think I said to David just before we left, I've left someone's shoe up on top of the wardrobe just in case. And uh, then we, we got on the flight and arrived. And then, guys, guys, where's my shoe? You know, so I still owe you a set of I owe you a shoe. I, I, I bought that pair of shoes like the day before we left there. Seriously, I, and you had to hop the whole way down then to the bus station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> one legging mate. So where'd you go on from there then? I uh, that was going into first year juniors on the road. So I raced for a Spanish team. I literally got the bus from we we drove down to B- Brussels. You guys are flying from Brussels. I yeah, got a yeah. bus from Brussels to Paris, and then another bus with my dad um down right. to Bilbao. Which is why I raced for the year down there. What team was that with? Gausa La Tostadora, um, a junior team that I was racing for and had a great time. Really, really good. Where this race has really suited me down there and super hilly. So I was happy out. Yeah. As if some of you just don't know, uh, Archie, you're, you're, what size are you? What height? I'm uh, 170 centimeters. Um, well, it's not that that small, but I'm not too small. Eh? What weight are you? Fifty-five. Crazy. Like, I'm, I'm only ten centimeters tall. I'm one one eight one. So like I'm eighty eighty kilos at the moment. So yeah, yeah. I, I was I was getting measured up the other day, and it was like one seventy three. But people don't believe me. That's the hair. So I think I, I think uh, I think that's out of my reach. That's that's the hair. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you kind of. We have a thing. Up behind our kitchen door where we put Bradley on Albion and we would go over and measure and it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. he got his head shaved the other week and he, he like, ah, oh, fuck. you know so <laughs> you've done that so oh, eight, that was 18 um, you had a couple of good rides that year in Wales would that be right? yeah end of the year I rode for Nicholas Roach team I was supposed to ride for them the whole year and then this Spain opportunity came up so I rode for Nicholas Roach in June Tour Wales and won the last stage and got third overall there. It was a bit of a breakthrough ride. Yeah. A bit of a surprise to everyone and a surprise to myself, actually. Seriously, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
I don't know how it's gonna go, really. So who did you beat that day? You beat a couple of boys. Uh, I was beat a uh, Mason Hollyman, Ben Tullett. Yeah. If some of you just don't know so, Ben Tullett is he won the, the junior worlds and the following year, was twice. it? Twice. Twice, yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Um so then you went from there, I was eighteen. Did you you didn't you haven't done much racing in Ireland, would that be fair to say? I've done nothing. Yeah. Like I, I, cause I rode for a Spanish team as a first year junior, so I basically did no races in Ireland then, apart from toward north. But uh, yeah. I uh, left with an, the start of a knee injury, yeah. which is still affecting me today. Um, and then I raced for a UK team, Zappi, as a second year junior. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so crazy. I just raced toward north again and, yeah, yeah. and nationals, and that's about it. Yeah, which isn't isn't a bad thing. You know, people people are like wanting to get out of Ireland. And maybe don't get opportunities where you've got the opportunity. It's like Ireland's always going to be here. These races are always going to be here. That that you can end up doing at my age. You know what I mean? Yeah, sh- sure. One day we'll be. I'll be racing for Kinning Cycles and Tour the North oh. in twenty forty. You know, you and Bradley. Yeah, exactly. All the so, boys. Yeah, it's like it's like take these opportunities when you can. You know, people like I know of people that have had opportunities, and you know you have to go and get this flight. To go to Belgium for the Irish team, and people have deliberately missed those opportunities because they don't want to race maybe in Belgium. I know, I know, there's, there's been stories like that throughout the years, so we have to take that. So that was you wrote the worlds. Then what year was that? Is that 2018? 2018 yeah. and 19. And yeah. that was So what was that? Innsbruck and Innsbruck. Um, both were a bit of a nightmare for me. Innsbruck oh, yeah. and Yorkshire. Oh, yeah, sure would have been. Both yeah. years, I sort of picked up a cold after Wales, and both years mirrored each other. I did um, race. I raced Wales, got the ferry home, got sick, struggled train up to the world, and didn't go so well. Unfortunately, I I did a few tests before, and all all was going well. I thought, but uh, didn't didn't turn out on the day. Unfortunately, but uh, wow. well, see, at least you're there. You're you're at the meeting. You're in the mix. Um, that takes us up to what, the end of 2019 then, yeah? Year yes. COVID. How did that go? 2019 went well. Uh, racing for Zappi. I got some good opportunities to race abroad. As a junior, I think it's really important to race as abroad as possible, you know, for a team. If you're not studying, you're not doing lean start or anything like that. Because otherwise you'd be stuck in A3, trying to get to A1, and that's a whole... Yeah, another like story you know everyone's goal yeah yeah exactly and just when you're racing a3 it's a bit if for the top few boys it's a bit pointless you know you yeah. need to be pushing yourself and you need to get a brawl to go try and get to the next level you know so 2019 went well um i had a few results here and there and again got selected for the worlds but unfortunately that didn't turn out so well but uh you know i was happy out with this with the year overall and- so you only did the cross one season, would that be right in saying, or one or two? Yeah, see, I did I did one year, and then I went to Worlds, and then a month after Worlds, while I was in Spain, I came back for a tour north. It was, I was only supposed to come out for the week, and then in tour north, I injured my knee, and then at the time, we thought maybe it could be cyclocross, could be running, yeah. you know? So I stopped the cyclocross. We've since learned it's not the running, okay. but uh, I never picked it up again. Yeah, yeah. I just focus on the road. That's it, yeah. yeah. But, uh, like, I, I, I'd love to come back. I mean, you look at Van Der Poel and Van Aert, you know? Yeah, yeah. Maybe it added it as something to my overall cycling, but... Uh, yeah, well, we'll that seems know. to be the end thing at the moment, doesn't it? The whole cycle cross and the sort of pushing on to the pros and all that sort of stuff. Now, like, oh, 100%. If you're, if you're a kid, you should be getting into the cross. You should yeah. be getting into the mountain biking. Mountain biking more so, I think, you know? It's just... Yeah, I think that's what... Thomas was sort of talking about the last he was on a few podcasts ago and he was like sort of saying that there's a few boxes he wants to tick for the, the, the off road still, you know. He should do, he should do that. I think mountain biking is so cool. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I'd love no, to I, do it. Yeah, well it, it's there, you know what I mean? The scene wouldn't be that great here. So I think he's gonna no, have no. a little bit of travel. But if you if you can accept that and want to do the travel and then, then yeah. yeah, go for it. So then that takes us up to twenty twenty then coming into the start of this time last year what was the setup there then so i managed to get myself a contract for team yomavisma academy okay they're on 23 debit team 
so they emailed me in May, say, I think it was after, I think it was before toward North as a junior and someone mentioned them to me and they wanted me to come over to um, Netherlands for a power test and the power test thankfully went well and they were really were keen to have me on, which I was super lucky because yeah. I think yeah. when you look at all the guys that were signed, there was them. And then the, then there was the thirteenth rider, me. Oh, you know, okay, okay, yeah. I, I I think I was the luckiest person alive to get onto the team, and still am today. You know, taking the opportunity when it comes, yeah. No, exactly. Like it could not have gone any better. And it's not like I went out and won a huge race in the Netherlands or in Belgium. You know, it's just really by it all worked out well for me, for myself. You've done something which is flagged up, and, and then they've went, all right, okay, let's let's look at this guy here and. Get them in, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, and like, like I said, I was super lucky. It all worked out. I'm thankful, you know. So, so I'm happy this, here. That was this time last year or the year before? Yeah. Um, it was, uh, it was around toward North 2019. It was around April 2019, yeah, yeah. and then I went for testing in June, and then I didn't find out. Um. So I I did the testing. They said they'd come back within like two weeks it'd been like four weeks or something i assumed like you know it's okay maybe, maybe i wasn't so good at the testing and then they came back and um i got the offer so i was happy out Brilliant. Okay. at the end of july i think so from and from the end of july i knew so you're under 23 then with them yeah yeah so i started first year in 23 with them and what like i've went through, i was on uh the cycling stats and the same that you've done a lot of what would you say like junior and under 23 like pro races would that be right in saying like you've done a couple of them like like the younger sort of side of racing would that, would that be the right wording for it do you mean pro races as in like the junior yeah, colonel brussel yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, I, I was lucky in that zappy one of the reason i went to zappy was they had a great calendar and yeah. i could Throw my 50 kg body into Kern and Kern and knock yeah, her yeah. course and yeah, yeah. try and survive. <laughs> yeah. So that, that was a great experience to try and again move up to the next level, you know, yeah. get that bells and racing experience that everyone I think should have. Yeah, definitely. Like I've only done it with the, the cross. I don't know. I think you, the road is a whole different thing. I think you do need the team and all that sort of thing. But like if you can race in Belgium, it's, it's, a, it's a box to tick. 100%. And this. You know, trying to get a team that you don't just do the um, the kermesses on the side, especially as a junior, you know, you want to try and get a team that does the UCIs, you know, the big yeah. ones, because that's where the best riders go to and you can really get that better experience rather than doing a kermesse, you know? I suppose maybe, maybe advice for some people would be like, Start up, you would have to start off and, and work your way up. Would that be right in saying like another kermesse? Oh, exactly. You can't, you can't just jump into a UCI, yeah. 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 No, 100%. You got to... You got, you got to be pushy on the home scene, you know. You want to be keep tapping away on the home scene, and if you think you can try, you can try and yeah. get in contact with a team and get the opportunity. Put your name right there. Awesome. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, because I, I always remember with like Danny and I think it was Peter Hawkins. He was going over and riding Kermesses. Yeah, right. Just a crit for hours, like. Yeah, no, but when I when when I say Kermesses, the Kermesses are great as a on twenty three elite rider. That's great okay. to go and do. When when I when I say it's harder to get into UCI's as a elite rider because you can't just guess for a team. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe you can, but it's it's a lot easier as a junior. Yeah, yeah. So for the elite guys, like what Danny does to bring them over and do Kermes racing is brilliant, you know. Yeah, I remember asking Danny whenever he was first on the scene. Then. I was like, damn, I have a ten over and just blank point. Yeah, oh, you're told. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's, he's he's done well. Like he's got guys over there, and uh, I think he's he's finished a few boys off. A couple of boys have went over and went, nah, it's it's not for me. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, They've realised, you know. Yeah, but it's great to have that experience. You know, it it makes you or breaks you. Yeah, like I know Mon Monty really enjoyed it, and like. I think he, he still got the hunger for trying to get he, back he over. went well over there, I yeah, think, yeah. didn't he? Yeah. Because he signed for was it three AM or M three? Um, yeah, well, didn't he go to on post after he that? He was thing? On, on post for a while as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, going well. You know his numbers were, were big in the tests, like I always remember Monty's ticking boxes. So like yeah. guys like that that you know 
done those those stepping stones up, you know. So tells us big like I was talking to a few boys and they're all like, oh, I'm talking to Archie. Ask him, does he know what? So what what's the way your team is set up and, and your side as opposed to the, the other side then? So we're basically just a mini Yumbo team, you know? Like we see that we had a training camp in January with all the teams, but we're all in our bubbles. Okay. Yeah. So we yeah. we're not really supposed to go into contact, you know. We're trying yeah, to keep yeah. to our bubble. Yeah. Like I, I, I we we'd all see White walking down at the dinner table and be like, Oh my god, it's a white, you know, see see the man in person. But uh we wouldn't be, you know, too friendly. Yeah. Yeah. And where was the training camp? So we had a uh, training camp in January in Alicante and then another yeah, yeah. one in February in Denia. And you, you are all riding the same bikes? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're all riding Svelo, which is What's it, what's it like? Yeah. Svelo's brilliant. Re they're really fast. Yeah. Around the S5 at the minute, it's brilliant. Is that the one with the fancy handlebars? Yeah, yeah. They get a bit of... You got to get used to it a bit. At first, I was like, Ooh, what's this stem, you know? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. it's brilliant now. Um, and you had the Bianchi last year. They were nice bikes now. Bianchi's are they're good on the eye, you know. Yeah, yeah, lovely, lovely all, stuff. I, I really enjoyed that. All the gear then. Yeah. Um, exactly. So obviously, some of the, just the plain benefits of, of being on that sort of team is is getting to the bigger races. But like, what else do they offer? Like, you know, are you getting you know your, your nutrition, your your training is that everything is set out for you, or can you train whatever way you want? Or uh, big thing in the team is everyone's coached by a team so it's it's brilliant i think it's absolutely amazing. the coaching is really really good and it's so easy between the coaches and the director sportifs to contact in between races and everything it makes everything so seamless and like i said the coaching is really really good like we we get coached by the same guys that coach world tour riders well sort of yeah, yeah. And like they, they all use the same philosophies for the world tour coaches and riders. So it's brilliant coaching. Right. And then obviously the equipment and that then. So then what's the plans? You're, you're doing a few, you've done already done a few races this year. Yeah. So I was over in Croatia, had a two one days and a stage race. Um, two one days were decent, flat one days working for our sprinter. And in the stage race, I was hoping to, have a bit of opportunity myself, but I crashed out after on the first road stay, on the first road day, um, and banged my knee up. And unfortunately, I've been off the bike okay. for yeah. eight or nine days. Oh, a bit of a knee injury, sort of the same thing as uh, as a first year junior, but uh, that's slowly getting better. I managed an hour and a half on the bike today, so okay. I'll be okay. back slowly but surely. Keeping keeping the KJs off, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know how it is. Struck that. Um, <laughs> so, go back to the cyclocross. Um, you'll probably not ride maybe for a year, a couple of years maybe. While this is the road is the main focus. Yeah, no, um, definitely. I'd love to get back at it, but it's not something um, it's I'm itself. probably going to be focusing on anytime soon. Yeah. Especially for me at fifty-five kilos, like I'll I'll never be a pro cyclocross rider. Well, you did. That's it all. But like, okay, uh, unless it's on that um course in Glen Cullen every year nationals, it's up and down the hill. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I that's I yeah, that, that that was good for me. But that's uh, where the national champs were a few years ago. You were third that day, yeah. Second. Second. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, was, I okay. didn't catch Thomas, but uh, yeah, yeah. Wasn't too far off. I know. I remember watching the race, going, hey, "Who's this guy?" You know, because I had not even seen you before. I knew, I knew of, of of Adam, yeah. Dad. But uh, you then had was it Mines the bikes? It took a while to sell them. Yeah, yeah. So I bought a Paul Mines frame, just a painted over Ridley X Knight. Okay. Canty okay. frame, brilliant bike, super light. I thought, okay. I won't get this. I want the lightest thing, you know? So I was yeah, yeah. a really excellent county. Brought that over to super muddy Valkenburg. Could not stop going down the hill with carbon tubs. Yeah, yeah. There's nightmare in the mud. 
on the steep descent, but brilliant bikes, brilliant, brilliant yeah. bikes on, on a dry course, like on a dry yeah. course, I would say it's the best. Maybe, maybe for your weight, the discs would be maybe a bit overkill. See, no, um, actually what was with the disc was having to pick it up, you know, and yeah. like I'm, I, I was, especially then I was pretty weak yeah, yeah. and my running was terrible. So I was like, okay, let's get a light bike. So it wouldn't be so hard strip, to run with. Down, so I can yeah, yeah. I can get over the boards. Yeah. Because <laughs> if I have this heavy disc brake bike, I, I, I really struggle. Because oh, I'm, I'm just a small dude, you know. So, as you say, you're so what like your watts per kilos? What what are what were you again? Did you say? Fifty five. Fifty five. Okay. And like the 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 whole like four hundred watts would be like the, sort of everyone's goal. But like when you're climbing say like a, a long climb what would your aim for your watts be would it be a certain number or are you yes, define long, long climb a long climb could be three hours or uh, 20 well, minutes well for, for us over here well say ten, a 10 minute climb would you be watts per kilo or like a certain number don't we don't need numbers like maybe if you're having enough but would you base it on watts per kilo or heart rate or what sort of guy are you um, I wouldn't be off heart right now. Um, let's just get it as high as possible, eh? Yeah. But uh, with good. the numbers, I wouldn't be too focused on the watts per kilo. Um, for me, a focus for me is trying to get the, the watts as high as possible because my weight's always going to be good. I'm a yeah. light yeah. guy. I don't really put on the weight. So it's always trying to get the, the raw power, which will help me in the flatter stuff yeah. up there. Um, so for a 10-minute climb, I'll be trying to do close to 7 watts per kilo. Jeez, impressive. Yeah, that's fine. Like the the pro, like that is pro numbers, like isn't it? Yeah, but the the thing is, I I can't do it in the saddle, so I can't do it on the flat. Okay, yeah, yeah. So it's it it all evens out, you know. Yeah, yeah. And like, would you have a good sprint on you? Would you say? Oh no, jeez, no. no. Because some of those also. <laughs> We're, we're saying like sprinter, your sprinter bar was up on, on pro cycling. Yeah, I know on pro cycling stats, it says yeah, yeah. I'm a sprinter. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. brilliant. Yeah. It's, all, it's all true then, yeah. Yeah, it's it's, it's good for the head. Yeah. So when I look That's at it. my 1,000 uh, my watt peak, just about. I, I hit 1,000 watts last winter for the first time. Oh, seriously? I, I, I don't even... I don't even know what mine is like, yeah. But... Oh, yeah, but yeah, a bit more, I'd say. What would Swift then? Have you not? You haven't delved into it? Zwift. Um, yeah. I delved into it a bit last lockdown. And then injure my knee again. Oh. So I was hitting Swift because it was the same yeah. time I injured my knee. <laughs> no, but I, I, I do rate Swift. It's not bad. Yeah. We could sign you up for the Taylor North team. Is, that's on Swift, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, so it's like uh, four four stages over three days. The first one's like around London. The second one's a time trial. Don't quote me on the third one. And then the last one is up to the radial mass. Have you ever done, done that one? It's a big, long climb. And then drops okay. down and does the Alpe d'Huez. Fucking hell. So it, it is the... the, the how, 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 how are they going to make sure that Glenn doesn't say he weighs 45 kilos when oh, he's I've, I've, closer to high set, 60s, I'll, I'll put 70s. it in. I'll get yeah? that. Yeah. Are they going to make everyone take the video with the weight beforehand and yeah well Lindsay Watson was saying there is there's a verification process and how they do it and you know that that you're doing it and you're, you're not leaning on something where, where you're putting really on the scales you know what I mean or making the scale lean on something yeah you know, yeah, yeah. Bit, you know so takes uh, the weight off a bit. I was going okay there and then last week well it started this week took a bit of a man flu so like the weight was going okay and then it's plateaued a bit and then okay. we're coming into the weekend where the, the alcohol comes in, you know. So it's like ah fuck. But I'm only a week to go, so it's like you know what? Just just for that week. So uh, is this a reoccurring problem? The, the weight goes down. No, 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 the weight goes down during the week, and then it hits the weekend, and the oh yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just yeah. up and down. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it, it it's been good for that there, but yeah, um, I know a lot of people that just just can't have it. Um, yeah. So, Speaking people and they're like, no, I just, just can't have Swift, like, you know what I mean? But yeah, it sort of throws the old Watts Pequilas in the face, and it's not all yeah. about Watts Pequila, you know. You don't, you yeah, don't yeah. win unless you well, unless you're racing up a, an hour climb, you don't win races on Watts Pequilas. Yeah, that's true. You know, so yeah, that would be the thing then for, for you racing at, at home here. There's not many 
uphill sort of finish. Oh, as well. The race in the home is hard for me. Yeah, yeah. I think I think I'd, I there's nothing more I want to do than race at home. I'd love to just get into an A1 race because I've always looked as a youth rider. I've always looked up to those guys, and I never really got the opportunity because I was always racing abroad. Yeah. So yeah, I sort yeah. of like skipped it, and I really want to do it. But it's all. And uh, so, and then there was last year's nationals, which I, I raced Ronda Lizard last year, a uh, state race in France, and between Ronda Lizard and nationals was 13 days i quarantined for 13 days they wouldn't let me ride because i didn't quarantine for 14 days seriously yeah and then and then i actually heard um maybe two months ago apparently they abolished the rule for good so uh, here was the whole problem was conti riders weren't um weren't so there, there was a world team with um world tour riders and they came back for nationals within yeah. the 14 days but they were ex uh, exempt from the quarantine because they were pro but conti riders weren't considered pro okay and i was just like what i mean i mean i don't i, I don't consider myself a pro but it's a yeah, yeah i felt yeah, i should get yeah. yeah exactly you know so, but I heard um, they abolished that rule like a few days before the race, but no one told me. Yeah, it's like, is that the second round? I don't know. Yeah, it was like disc brakes were banned for years. And then was it Roach came over with his disc brake bike? Um, the night oh, yeah. Before, yeah, the night before the Nationals. I remember it was Dan Martin, one of the pros came over with their disc brake bike. And then disc brakes were legal in Ireland the day, after, the day before the champs. That's funny. Yeah. So yeah, just just when it, they suit the pros, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a pro. It doesn't suit me. Oh well. well so, what about um, our our good friend from the world, Donald O'Brien? Have you heard much from him? No, I haven't. He messaged me a while ago, um, just to catch up and see how it was going. Yeah, not much, not not too much, but lovely fella. Good yeah. memories. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So when we were at the World's Donal was, uh, what would you say, like a helper? The I think he was the everything. The everything, the go-getter. The uh, chef. Chef, yeah. So, yeah. Top Swanee. And uh, comedian. Um, ja team jacket prov provider. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I went to the race that he is part of over in Holland. Ah, yeah. We went there a couple of times and he's... He was on the floor whenever I was trying to get funding for the ESI race, and he's just an absolute character, not doing enough for anybody. Like, you know, he's, he's, he's a brilliant guy, so yeah, yeah, agreed, absolute character. And uh, he's just Archie, fucking annoying. <laughs> that's, that's, <I'm> just, <laughs> this is what all the all my younger mates say, Archie, fucking Ryan. Yeah, it just he just it's Archie, just value, fucking Ryan, just evaluated into that. And was like, hey, where, Where'd that come from? And he was like, Right, he, he stuck it to him, stuck it to you. But, uh, yeah, I don't he, know. It's it's followed me to the Yumbo. Oh, seriously? Yeah. Yeah, no, no. Like the boys call me Archie fucking Ryan. Okay, brilliant. I must swear a lot or something. I'll, I'll have know. to. Uh, I'll have to let him know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, no, he, <laughs> he was an absolute character. He was a good, great help, like so he was. Um, oh, I agreed. He, um, he had a big point sort of then, Do you remember the other guy with the hat? Remember the other guy that was there helping? He had the, the like fancy hat on. Uh, Aaron. No, not Aaron. Did he have Aaron. The English guy that came over. Andy's mate. That's, I can't remember his name. Oh yeah, from my uh, hard robes. Yeah, yeah, the, the pro. Uh, yeah. Um, oh jeez. I, I see his face. I don't see a name. Yeah, it'll uh, it'll come up. I'll nice have, guy. I might have to edit this out a bit, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely character. And then Lara's went on to do, do a lot now. She's ticked a lot of boxes, national champion. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. She's going well. Always going well. Yeah, unbelievable. Though. So, yeah, these were um, how, how do I say it? The youth. Like I got home after that. I think I added these on the uh, PlayStation, and then Bradley was saying, <laughs> yeah. "Some some guy called Archie's messaging me," and I was like. <laughs> What? Because I Bradley has taken over my PlayStation. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't Fortnite. It was another game. But then I think you 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 were playing Fortnite at one stage. And then yeah, no, I had, I had a bit of a Fortnite stage for sure. Yeah, yeah. I I remember I invited Bradley to a few games. So oh, probably, uh, yeah, Bradley, yeah, him and the daughter and I on it. Abby, they're both on it, and uh, yeah, they're, 
so crazy. It's Friday, Friday on Saturday night in our house is Fortnite all night. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You too? No, well I haven't. I have a PlayStation Five, but um, oh I'm, yeah, I'm Call of Duty man. Yeah, yeah. So the new Cold War. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Been playing that the last couple of weeks. Kicking Actually, ass. that's so yeah. cool. Yeah, that's so, so cool. And then Bradley comes down and takes it off and, and kicks my ass. <laughs> So, uh, that's so funny. I think that's awesome. I really appreciate you coming and giving the time out, and uh, we'll um, get an hour to catch up halfway through the season whenever you get the yeah, hands up. Yeah, sure. Get the hands up somewhere. Uh, we'll see. What's the daily routine? Um, no, you're off the bike at the moment, yeah. Yeah, not much. I'm off the bike. <laughs> uh, wake up, ice my knee. A little bit more time, ice my knee. No, uh, I don't uh, just wake up. Breakfast, train, come back, probably do some stretching or go to the gym, and then the core work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. My my uh, my day re- revolves around eating. I just uh, look oh, seriously. Eating. It's all it's all laid out in front of you, and that's it. Yeah. No, 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 not not at all. Uh, we don't have that pleasure in the day. Okay. Like we're told, what like we get guidance and everything, but we don't have the weighing scales out weighing everything. We do what we want, and we all have good diets ourselves, you know. Oh, so it's not like when we were at the waters, it was just the sink, the sink was blocked and it was just passed everywhere. You, you're, doing the, you're doing the dishes now? Yeah, 100%. Like, um, I'm in the team house right now. It's probably not so far off the sink being blocked. Oh, I, I was OCD of the, the, the married man with the three single men running about, you know? Like, I, I could use Donal around to be head chef right here. Seriously? Like well, it's it's start. What does it start or or go well? You know that sort of thing. <laughs> start or go well. Yeah, yeah, that's it. This is going to be some um, people aren't going to like this for uh, starving yourself and going well. Well, you have, you have to get the KGs off. <laughs> this is very old school now, Glenn. I don't I don't think this is the message we want to be sending well, out to. I actually Matt. remember remember going to a stage race, which was a there was a third cut in our group. Now it wasn't a two to the north, but we were staying in a house. And there was a, a bottle like this, and the guy had it full of a pasta, and he was with a pan like this, and he was counting out the pasta and weighing it to get the, the grams. And a fella came in and looked at him and says, what are you doing? He says, I'm weighing out my pasta. And he just got everything and just effed it off and said, fuck this here, we're going down to the, the, the bar to get a burger. And the guy that was doing it wasn't underweight, let's put it like that. He was a, quite, quite a large on, on an A3, so yeah. I was listening to a podcast the other day. It was Matt Stevens or something like that, and he said, um, "This is going to be a controversial thing to say, but sometimes you just got to go to bed hungry." I was yeah. like, "What the yeah. fuck?" <laughs> yeah, I remember. Was it Jeremy Powers? He was talking one of the races. He says, "Like that's that's what they did was go to bed hungry." Like, yeah. I I reckon that is so old school. You know. Yeah. You don't need to go to bed hungry to lose weight. No, I remember uh, going to the, the second land house with Robin Seymour and a couple of the boys back then. And there was just, you got up, you ate, went out your bike, came home, been at dinner, and then that was at lights out. And like we were there as the mountain bikers, you know, we yeah. just eating what we want. And people were looking at us, all, all, all the sick thin roadies back then, you know. Here, um, I think I'm going to see, I'm going to have to host one of these meetings another time so I can ask you questions about these good times in the cycling oh, the, just, that's what this podcast is all about just, just throw a few in here and there here and there <laughs> no you need to no, actually you should do a podcast about just fucking anything no oh, well about, yeah. about glenn tell me about yourself glenn please oh, well i had uh i had this idea with the gym he was like oh we'll sit down and i'll interview you and i was like no there, there'll be enough there'll be enough uh shy talk for me over the these next couple of podcasts you know <laughs> we've got to get these little gold snippets in do we yeah that's a, that's what it's all about just to be memories thrown them in because there's a lot of stories <laughs> one that you probably can't mention on this here you know but uh yeah what we'll do is maybe even towards the, the cyclocross borders me you Thomas, the, the four or five of us do, do oh yeah one, and we'll just del- delve into memory again you know? yeah, but, yeah. Um, we'll yeah. thanks for taking the time and uh good luck with the rest of the season Hey, mate, no problem. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me on. The Kinney Podcast.